Support companies that help support the Stony Ridge Farm. Subscribe to the channel and contact Farm Fence Solutions for all of your fence building and tornado wire needs. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. We've got all of our fence posts in on both sides of the farm and we're out here in front of the house in the shade and we're gonna show you guys some knot tying and what folks are here for. So this fellow down here tying fence, what's your name? Sebring Jessup. Sebring Jessup, what's your fence company? Jessup Branch Fence. Jessup Branch Fence. And you're right here in North Carolina, right? Yes, sir. Gotcha. So we're all learning here. We're all working together. And he's down here learning how to tie the specific knot that we use to tie the tornado wire up here on the fence. So come along today. We're going to show you guys kind of what goes into hanging the wire here on our fence. And everything's looking super awesome. You can see that row of fence posts going straight out through there. It's going to be a good time. We're going to get some cool drone footage. And we're all going to learn a little bit today. All right? Woo! doing today is, uh, is tying off 1348-12 Tornado Titan. It's a fixed knot, high tensile woven wire product uh, from Tornado Wire. Seaburn's down from Westfield, North Carolina, and he came to learn a little bit about termination knots. Uh, he's really excited about learning a figure eight knot, but right now what we're working on is uh, cleaning up his termination knots a little bit. Uh, getting his structure down just like it needs to be. His lazy loop is a little bit too lazy, and uh, he was having a little bit of trouble with getting slack around the post. So we're working on getting that fixed for him. Uh, we'll have him tying knots perfect here in just, just a minute. So what we're tying here is a termination knot. The problem that Seaburn was having, right here where those wires are, are crossing is where he was gonna start his tie. And what that does is it leaves too much slack here. So we're gonna get a whole nother inch out of that to make this a much tighter knot around the post, which will leave less chance for entrapment. Animals won't be able to get a leg in it. So there's our finished termination knot. So what Luke's doing, you've got a remote control, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and he's concentrating. So Luke is running the remote control Evo 1 and there is a uh, spot right here for hanging wire for pulling wire out here. So he's going to pull the wire all the way down uh, to the termination point, which will be right here at this gate. And the other fella, Mark, he's down there uh, moving the gate out of the way. So we'll show you how we tie the termination knot here. Now stick around because we have a little bitty short run over here and we got to do something a little bit different. So we'll show you that too, okay? And we'll get you guys some cool drone footage. Alright, so Mark has a strain right wedge style strainer board and what we're going to do is connect that to our wire, our termination point right here and we're going to pull this wire tight, okay? We're going to connect just before we get to our termination post and we're going to pull it really tight with the winch on the Evo. We'll show you guys how we do that. We'll pull it really tight and then we tie termination knot down here. So Mark Olson with SWI out in Wyoming um, and we're going to show you how the strain right wedge style strainer boards work. Not unlike uh, concrete forms, if you're familiar with those and how concrete forms work, basically it pins, pinch everything down, keep it tight, so we pull these out. This separates, and then we can put this on both sides of the wire, put the wire in here, then put these back in, and it pinches it off, and when that pinches together, it creates so much friction 
that it can't uh, slip and so we can pull on it really tight and you'll see here when just a second when we pull on it with a winch um, we can get a lot of tension on this without any slippage so so what we're doing is we're putting this on and what we'll make sure that this bar is exactly even with our uh, stay wire and these poke through here just like this then we take these wedges and insert them in there then we'll drive these down with a hammer pinch the wire nice and tight and then pull it with a winch so our next step uh, if we're going to do an end strain with an evo uh, is to chain on to the strain right wedge style strainer boards and then we'll run the winch cable straight back to the v in the chain and then as that tensions it'll find center uh, and keep the the strainer board nice and vertical. This is our uh, guide guideline for our post. We use a 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire and then we just leave it. Uh, but we've stretched across the gate hole. We wanted the gate to be in line with the fence. So uh, what we've done is cut it in the middle of the gate hole and we're going to tension it up on both sides and go ahead and tie it. Now there's a, uh, a lot of benefit to using this over a string line. It's cheap, it's effective, it's good in tall grass, the wind doesn't blow it so you don't end up with a fence line that uh, looks like a snake but it also is a huge benefit of the fence uh, in America traditionally we always put something over the fence so there's a hot wire or a barbed wire on the top of the fence the place in a net wire that gets the second most stress is the bottom so uh, around the rest of the world it's pretty traditional to use a plain wire and either tie it right in with the bottom or have it a couple inches below so that offers a little bit of added protection uh, to the net wire This is the strain right chain strainer. Uh, we're using it right now in conjunction with uh, a strain right anchor chain, which is one of my favorite tools. It's often underrated, but it's basically a Y-shaped chain uh, that you can use for a lot of things, like the, like uh, tying off the terminal post here. Uh, the, the strain right chain strainers do not come with a hook on the end. The other end that comes with this has a another uh, jaw wire grab on it. So sometimes going around a post, uh, this is what we prefer. Uh, but we use these for pulling wire up or down in a dip. Uh, the end of a post, pulling post, it's a good, just a good all-around tool to have. So the winch on this uh, Evo one is a hydraulic powered winch. It's also remote control. Uh, most of our other machines have electric winches on them, which is convenient because you can run it with the machine off. But the hydraulic winch has considerably more power. Uh, so instead of a 14,000 pound winch, we've got a 20,000 pound pull capacity on this. The downside is that the machine has to be run and operated. If you don't have an Evo or a, a machine with a winch on it where you can make a fine tune on the stretch here, we would use what's called a boundary strainer, uh, which is another chain uh, walker setup. You just tie off to your strainer post and then the, the, uh, the chain walkers are on this end and you just tighten it top and bottom until you've got it nice and snug and even. Uh, tie your wire off and let the pressure off. So guys, this is a high tensile woven wire, okay? So it's pulled very, very tight and we're pulling about 450 feet from the top of the hill down here to this gate area. Now you can see he's got the strainer board just ahead of the post here, okay? So if you had this behind the post, you couldn't tie it off. So he's got it pulled, he's gonna stretch it just a little bit tighter. You can see that winch is just pulling it super duper tight. That's it. So it's like a, like a springboard and he's still pulling it even tighter. Let's talk about this brace in case you haven't seen any of the other videos here. So this is the brace. That's a four inch heavy duty galvanized post. That's a 10 foot, two and a half inch heavy duty galvanized post and a three inch stubby. It's a six foot long post pounded all the way below the surface. It's welded there and it's welded there and it makes a super tight, good looking brace for pulling from.
you can see how it's up off the ground right here so we've got to attach it to the post down low some of these posts have braces in them to keep them from pulling up out of the ground you can see we're almost ah, about four feet off the ground over here this wire is designed with these dents in it and if you've ever seen wire let's get over here a little bit where the grass is in the background so there are little dents in the wire right there and that's for pulling it tight we're here in the summertime okay so the heat matters right now the wire is probably at about as warm as it's going to get so we're about 90 degrees out here in the hot sunshine just like anything as it gets warm it's going to expand as it gets cold it's going to contract so we want to pull it really really tight because we're in the hot summertime and we don't want any sags in the fence this is really really tight and we've got a corner up here and we'll give you a little bit of detail on that so what we call this is a turn assembly. We use a, a four inch by 10 foot SS40 uh, piece of pipe for the strainer. We use a 10 foot two and three eighths for the strut. And then there's a three inch by six foot uh, stubby that's driven all the way in the ground at that end. Now what uh, you'll commonly see on a, a fence where there's a turn being made is you'll see it braced that way and that way in line with the fence. Now the problem with that is there's no strain that way and there's no strain that way. The strain on a turn is directly in the middle of the angle. So we've got this braced right in line with the pressure that's on this post. Uh, the, the biggest trouble with bracing it the wrong direction, that way and that way, when you've still got the strain going that way, you'll see this, and if you, if you pay attention driving around, you see it a lot. You'll see that this post just starts to lift out. So we realize that this isn't the most attractive thing and that it's strutted back into the field. We'll show you uh, a breast block scenario that we used on some others but this is uh, the only way to brace going around the corner that's actually holding the tension are you guys ready for this so here's what we're going to do to get around a four inch post we need about 30 inches of wire so we know that these are 12 inch stays there's 24 the middle of this one is going to be our 30 inches we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of extra because the longer tail you've got the easier it is to tie a termination knot so we're going to cut these off and we'll strip two verticals out of the way. So a common misconception with fixed knot is that it's a pain to uh, strip the knots out. And that's because a lot of folks uh, think that you have to make basically four cuts to get that loose. And then you've got to cut the other two. So six cuts total to get all the trash off. And then you've got mountains of these tiny little scraps to keep track of and get picked up. So the proper way to take a to strip a termination knot is to cut just in the center of the knot, cut the vertical stay in the center of the knot. So once the verticals are cut in the middle of the knot, all you have to do is bend the top of the fixed knot over and it loosens right up, you can slide the whole piece of scrap right off the end of the line wire. Okay, so I'll show you one more time the easy, easy way to get these fixed knots off. Once you've cut the vertical stay in the center of the knot, is just to twist it over and it loosens right up. And you can slide this whole piece off of your line wire and this is easy to keep track of. It's really important not to lose things like this in the grass where this could end up in, a, uh, say, a cow's foot or a horse's foot or even, uh, worst case scenario, a uh, cow uh, eat this and, and end up with hardware. So it's important to keep track of these. This is the easiest way to keep track of your scraps and not have all the tiny little pieces laying around. That's why we're having the Fence Expo here on the farm. For you guys for education, for these guys for education, for my education. It's awesome, guys. I really want to thank Luke, Farm Fence Solutions, and Tornado Wire for jumping in here and helping out and having all this for us. This is some awesome information that you're just not going to get anywhere else. So Seabrin's finished tying off the 134812. Uh, now we're going to slack the winch cable. And what we're shooting for is uh, less than a half an inch of movement in our strainer assembly when we uh, load the pressure back into it. We got zero movement there, so well within our limit. So once we've let the pressure off uh, with the winch cable, then it's time to take the strainer board out. Uh, and as you can see, we over tensioned by just an inch or so. Uh, that allowed the slack that was between the strainer board and the knots to take up, and we've still got a very tight fence.
So what we've got here is a short run uh, and with high tensile fixed knot like Tornado uh, 134812, the way that we'll stretch it uh, on an end strain with the Evo and a winch is great for a long run, but in a short run, uh, that little that, that inch or two of slack that we've got between the strainer board and the, the uh, termination post or the winch cable uh, when we tie off, it's difficult to uh, get it to absorb back into a small stretch of fence without slacking it too much. So on a short run of fence, what we'll do is add a Strainrite XT1, which is a ratchet strainer. Uh, it works several different ways. They're great for electric fence because you can, uh, you can pass the wire all the way through before you tension it so there's no break in the wire. Uh, you can also uh, stick these on after a wire uh, is terminated at both ends. Say it's just a quick repair you want to make. There's a cog on the inside of an XT1 right there that your wire would tuck into and then it hooks right in that groove and then you simply start to tighten it up. It applies pressure on the back side. Uh, but the way that we're going to use these today uh, is as a termination point for our woven wire. We've got this tied with a termination knot and then 10 tight loops uh, on this end of it. We could tie a termination knot here and we do this on occasion. Uh, it adds quite a bit of time because you've got to pre-tension it uh, and then tie the second termination knot in a really tight spot. So uh, just to make this easier for the do-it-yourselfer, this is suitable. Uh, there's enough, enough shock absorption in here that this doesn't unwrap, but we, we put 10 tight wraps on it just to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. So the way that we're gonna start that and uh, keep them all nice and even. We start with the cog up on every one of them. This is a tensioning uh, point on this. So if you don't have the tool handy, you can use a pair of pliers or even a crescent wrench uh, or a box end wrench to tighten your strainer up. So we're shooting for uh, right about an inch and a half before we make our bend right here between the knot and the strainer. And so as we bring that over and put a nice tight crimp in it. We're going to go 10 tight wraps. Once we've done our 10th wrap, we'll go a little past center and then be able to wring that right off. And the reason that we wring this off instead of cutting it with a pair of, of uh, Nipex bolt cutters is because that's smooth now. There's no, hard, there's no sharp edge to cut an animal. So with our Tornado 134812, we've got 13 line wires. So we're gonna have to do this 13 times and we want them all to match just like these two have matched. So the 13 in the 1348 is the number of line wires. The 48 is the total height of the net in inches. And then the 12 is the vertical stay spacing. So guys, I want to tell you, this is a different type of farm fence than you see in a lot of situations. Most people are building farm fence out of wood post. Yep. I was a hard sell and Luke can tell you that. I was a pretty hard sell. I'm like, ah, oh, man, but this is going to be so outrageously expensive. I mean, look at this brace. Look at all the money that's wrapped up in this brace. Tell me about that. Uh, it, it turns out it's not more expensive. It's just right around the same cost. So a lot of folks have left comments saying, man, that's a million dollar fence, you know, but it's not. It's, no, it's, it's really not. Uh, pipe is just a little bit more expensive than a wood post, traditionally. Right now, we're, uh, we've got a serious uh, lumber shortage in the US. Yep. So we're running into uh, a, f a five inch, eight foot uh, CCA treated wood post being about the same cost as a two and a half inch, eight foot. Wow. Schedule 40 gotcha. or SS40 galvanized post. Uh, where you really run into your cost savings, especially on Josh's farm here, uh, there's a lot of rock. So uh, when we have to drill rock, uh, we've got to over drill the hole. Uh, so it's got to be bigger than the, the post. So if we were putting in all five to six inch, eight foot wood post, or doesn't matter how long they are, if they're five to six inches in diameter, we're drilling a six or seven or eight inch hole. So it takes a lot more uh, effort, time, uh, fuel, um, energy the whole nine yards it takes more work to, to drill a bigger hole to put the same uh, the, basically the same function in the ground uh, a lot another uh, good benefit is if you're just hitting fracturable rock or small pieces of rock where that would kick a, a wood post off to the side you'd have a crooked post you've got to pull it you've got to dig the stones out a pipe post usually will will fracture that rock and drive either straight through it uh, if it does kick off to the side 
we can chain onto it and we can bend the pipe straight and it's not going to lose enough strength to, to matter in the long run where if you try to pull a wood post over it's obviously going to break so that's just some of the benefits uh, we also really like pipe because it can lay around for years and years and years so let's uh, take Josh's project for example he bought a load of pipe a year ago uh, some of that's been sitting here since last year he got some new, new fresh pipe in for a lot of this project some of it's been here a year if you let a timber post sit for a year and then try to drive it in hard ground it just shatters so a timber post to drive them has to have a fairly high moisture content uh, another thing we really like about pipe is that every one of them straight so we don't have any crooks in a bundle that we've got to haul home uh, it doesn't split we can get 37 of them in a bundle this big around so we can efficiently haul more material to the job we can put two pieces of equipment and enough pipe and wire uh, to build a mile or two of fence on one rig so it makes us more efficient all the way around so the next benefit that uh, I, I was able to to convince Josh to give a, give a whirl with was post spacing uh, modern uh, high tensile woven wire like tornado 134812 that we've put up here a fixed knot or square knot has a solid vertical stay so it's already got a, a pretty good stiffness factor to it we don't need a post every 10 or 8 feet or 12 feet or, uh, or even 16 feet if there's not much stock pressure on both sides of the fence uh, we can go 25 feet pretty effectively uh, you can see up behind us here that there is a stretch of fence there's probably a hundred feet of it that's off the ground 8 or 10 feet so we've got it stretched plenty tight uh, and with that increased post spacing it really reduces the cost of installation so you combine a high quality wire like tornado with a high quality post like a ss40 galvanized pipe and you've got a fence that's going to last three times as long as a wood posted fence so the, the cost of ownership decreases drastically you may spend a few more pennies on the front end but it's going to last forever so this section of fence is about 150 feet basically the guys just grab the fence and they pull the wire all the way down here and they're taking it down to the end and they'll tie those termination knots again like you've already seen and then we'll get back up here and use those ratchets to pull this section of wire tight guys if you like this kind of stuff if you're learning please pound that like button consider subscribing to the stony ridge farm channel i'd love to have you back there's a lot of fun stuff going on following our farm building project or following our dream and a lot of great information like this. So we're gonna zip over to the other side of the farm. Uh, this section right here is probably a little under half a mile. And over on the other side of the farm, we've got just about a mile of fence. And we got several more crews, maybe four more crews over here working. All right, guys, so they're already over here working. You can see they've got one stretch of wire here pulled. That's probably about 250 feet, maybe 300 feet. And we're down here tying our next termination knot right here. And this is Jake Wilson. Jake Wilson. So Wilson Fence out of? Lexington, Virginia. Lexington, Virginia. Land of milk and honey. Nice. And this is your honey. This is my honey. This but, is Fifi. Hi. <laughs> it's looking good. We've got lots of guys here ready to pull. Uh, this stretch of fence, again, is somewhere in the neighborhood of a mile, maybe just shy of a mile. All right, guys, three more fence companies represented here on the farm uh, today. Let's start with the quiet over here. I'm Jeremy from TNT Farm and Fence. Are you learning anything today? Absolutely. Awesome. And Brian Sloop from Sloop Fence in Mount Ola, North Carolina. And Gavin Langley with Langley's Fence in Ashburn, North Carolina. And you guys, if you follow the channel, you've seen all these guys rocking and rolling. So, uh, Langley Fence and Sloop Fence are the fellows that won the fencing competition last fall out at Luke's place in uh, Worthington, Indiana. And again, that's going to be October 1st, Luke, is that right? First, second, second, third. October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd this year, 2020, uh, in Worthington, Indiana. You can find out about it on farmfencesolutions.com. You can come. It's open to everybody. Okay, so a very educational opportunity if you want to leave the house and not just watch Stony Ridge Farm videos. I encourage you to do both. So what you're seeing here is the Evo rolling the fence wire out. It makes it so, so much easier than just rolling it out. And they're also going around that corner right there. So there's a corner, an outside corner, and they'll run the fence around the corner and pull tight to that. So that's what's going on. These guys are running a 660 foot roll of fence. So today we'll probably put at least 
five, maybe six rolls of this 660 foot uh, tornado wire. What we're doing here is we've got another really short stretch where we're using these XT1s, straight and right XT1s to take up the slack. So what we do is we have these in there and that allows us to take up every last bit of slack out of the short stretch. Probably the best way to uh, ensure that you don't have any loose, loose sections. You know, it's really common next to gates and things like that to have those really small stretches and it's just a, every fencer's nightmare dealing with those. Uh, they take a lot more time and this is um, one of the best ways that we can ensure we only have to do it once and it's good and tight. Here we are uh, right in front of Josh's place, in front of the house and the, and the shop. Uh, we're going to fence this, this little portion of the pasture off so it'll make jo it easier for Josh to bring cows from across the road to get them behind the house. It'll be a little bit of a trap, not, not to mention, I don't know what this is, maybe five acres of grass here. But anyway, we're using what's left of a roll of wire. And we've tied on here at the end instead of starting with a brand new roll. And we're going to join two rolls of wire together with figure eight knots. So instead of using crimp sleeves or gripples, uh, we're going we're gonna to join this with figure eight knots. So uh, we start that on the right hand side with a half a loop. And then uh, you guys can watch as we bring uh, the other piece in. And then it's, it's tied slack. And then as we tension it, those figure eights will suck right down tight. And we can finish them off with a couple of nice tight wraps. What we're going to do is finish off our figure eight knot here and it's going to look pretty busy until we put the tension to it. Uh, it's, uh, it's tied slack like this and then I'll give you a, a short little example here. As we pull the wire tight, these are all going to snug up and this will just continue to suck down tighter and tighter until that's a nice tight clean knot. So we'll show you that as we tension it. Now I'm going to tie a figure eight. Guys, the sun is going down here in North Carolina and we are on our last pull right here. We are not going to get done with this entire fence project this weekend. So look forward to more videos here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We're going to pull this tight and pull everybody together. We're all wore out and we'll talk about it. All right, so what we're doing here uh, Jake Wilson, Wilson Fence is down there. Gavin Langley, Langley Fence is down there holding this up and we're pulling this tight. Now this is around 1,200 feet of wire. This is two 660 foot rolls, so more than 1,200 feet. 1,300 and, don't make me do math on camera, 1,320 I think. Uh, that's a long pull right there. And what we're gonna do, this is the strainer board right here. Uh, Luke has a remote control that he's running the winch off of and that's it. So we're pulling tight with the strainer board, strainer board and we're going to tie off right here. Last one of the day. Let that tension off. Let's see what she does. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Well guys, we're gonna shut this machine down and uh, say goodbye to everybody. Guys, I wanna thank you all so much. I hope everybody came to the Fence Expo and got what they needed, enjoyed themselves, had some fun, worked hard, built a lot of fence. Uh, wanna, once again, tell me your fence company, your name? Jeremy Tevins, TNT Farm and Fence. Gavin Langley, Langley Fencer. Luke Gibson, Farm Fence Solutions. Brian Sloop, Sloop Fence. Jake Wilson, Wilson Fence. Felicia, Jake's girlfriend. <laughs> Mark Olson, SWI. 
Seaburn Jessup, Jess Branch Fence. Awesome. Guys, I'm going to fall down. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. We've been busting, but much more fencing to go. I got to build the rest of it. It's a good time. Thanks a lot, guys. Woo! <laughs> See you next time. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your